Hello, this is George Witten, the founder and editor of Worthy News. Uh, it is March 14th, 2003. The title of this episode is Eclipses, Red Heifers, Purim, and a Move of God. Um, I patiently put out this video. I didn't want to go ahead and rush and put it out. I spent quite a bit of time praying about how to talk about these things without getting people too anxious. You know, there's a lot of people that talk about the last days and their focus on the last days is doom and gloom. Um, you know, <laughs> prophecy was not meant to freak people out. It was actually for a building encouragement and comfort. I'm not a doom and gloomer. It is not the end of the world. It's a birthing of a kingdom. And so there's a lot of things happening. But in order to understand what's happening, I want you to go back a little bit. And just in modern history, obviously, there's a lot of talk about the eclipses. And so we had an eclipse in uh, 1778 and 1780. Um, both of these eclipses were happening during the Revolutionary War. Now, while a war was happening, while an eclipse was taking place, there was something else happening. There was an awakening happening. Most people don't realize an awakening was going across the U.S. in 1780, going for several years as the nation was being formed. Um, going and, and another thing is, while a lot of people are really focused on the eclipses, not every time there was an eclipse did something bad happen. I found a couple of eclipses that actually nothing happened. There was one here in, in, in 1805. Now, it's very interesting that Lewis and Clark are in the middle of North Dakota when observing the eclipse. So I thought that was kind of interesting. We had an eclipse in 1860. Now, 1860 happened during the Civil War, yes. But it also happened during what was called the Layman's Revival. The Layman's Revival was being led by D.L. Moody, R.A. Torrey. It was going all over the world. And so, yes, there was a war, but there was also a revival. Uh, we had an eclipse in 1918. Uh, this is the end of um, World War I. But it also happened to be a time at the um, the Spanish America uh, the Spanish flu. So there was an eclipse here, but it wasn't necessarily connected to the beginning of a war. It was connected to an end of a war, but it was also connected to something else. Um, there was the it was actually one of the the great eclipses. This actually goes across um, the entire U.S. straight across. We had another eclipse in 17, 1970. This is during the height of the Vietnam War. Uh, there's things happening at this time. And at the same time, this is the middle of the Jesus movement. So there was things happening. There was eclipses happening. Now, we had an eclipse that happened in 2017, a very unique eclipse. And this eclipse was known as the Great American Eclipse. It was the first one that went coast to coast since 1918. And so now what was interesting is as the eclipse, it went from northwest to southeast. And as it went across, it actually crossed seven Salems. Now, while a lot of people are really focused on these Salems, what happened at the end of that year? Well, you actually had Donald Trump announcing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. It happens in December. It happens during the time of Hanukkah. And so while this happens, this is actually fulfilling in, in, to Jewish people, especially the sect of Orthodox Jews that I'm surrounded with in the town of Arad. Judah ben Samuel is one of the really huge Hasidic rabbis. He lived in the 12th century, beginning to the 13th century. So here he is, and he writes, and he literally writes this, and it says this, when the Ottoman Turks, who were already empowered to be reckoned with on the Bosporus in the time of Judah ben Samuel, conquer Jerusalem, they will rule over Jerusalem for eight jubilees. And afterward, Jerusalem will become a no man's land for one jubilee. And then in the ninth jubilee, it once again come back into the possession of the Jewish nation, which would signify the beginning of the messianic end time. Now, jubilee cycles 50 years. Now, Judah ben Samuel writes this 300 years before it actually happens. And what happened? Well, the Ottomans did take control of Jerusalem. It took control of Jerusalem in 1517. Eight jubilees, eight times 50. It's 400 years. 1917, you had the British mandate. And then under the British mandate, you know, the, the Jerusalem was in no man's land. It was actually, you know... Then we had the, the 50 years later, one more jubilee cycle later, 1960. I mean, you had the Six-Day War, and Israel reclaims Jerusalem. 
Then in 2017, Donald Trump announces Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So you have to understand in the town that I was, I'm living, that I still have a house in, in Arad, that Hasidic Jews were looking at this as a very monumental event. And that year, they go ahead and produce a coin. Now, this was the Temple Institute producing a coin, believing they're going to rebuild a temple. And they looked at Trump as a picture of Cyrus. Now, Cyrus lived and is the time when Babylon falls. Cyrus comes to, um, to, comes to power. And the first thing he does, or one of the first things he does, is he has Ezra and Nehemiah go back and rebuild the temple. Now, that happened after 70 years of captivity. Now, Donald Trump comes on the scenes. It was 70 years since the UN Declaration called for the State of Israel. It was in 1947. It goes 70 years, and you have Donald Trump announcing Jerusalem. So they looked at this as a very prophetic sign. Later that year, or the next year, rather, the very first Passover, uh, Trump announces Jerusalem in, in December 2017. That Passover, now they go ahead and start sacrificing lambs near the temple mount later that year they go ahead and alter up an altar dedicating the altar on the feast of hanukkah hanukkah is the feast of dedication and this happens in december of 2018 a year after donald trump's announcement and so there's a lot of things happening now we have another eclipse going across this year it's going across april 8th and it's going from southwest going to northeast and as it crosses it's going to go across first jonah texas all the way in in the southern section of texas and then it's going to go across seven ninevehs now there's something that happened during the time of jonah if you study history, you'll realize that there happened to be an eclipse. And some people speculate the reason why, or part of the reason why the, the city Nineveh repented was because they were seeing signs in the heavens. Now, could it be that we're seeing signs in the heavens and it means something? Now, the two eclipses, the one in 2017 and the one in 2024, is going to cross. And there is a uh, several articles talking about how when an eclipse like this happened before, there was a major eclipse earthquake on the Madrid fault line. It could be. I don't know what's going to happen. But what I, what I do know is that this is is just like the Hebrew letter Tav in ancient Hebrew. It actually forms a cross. And so what I'm actually anticipating is a time of repentance. I'm actually anticipating a great move of God happening. Now, there's other people that have sent me, you know, articles and, they, and they're so focused on, is this the time of the rapture? Is this the time? Now, the one thing is, when the rapture happens, you know, we don't know. It's But the one thing we do know, the reason why God is patiently waiting is that he's wanting all to reach repentance, all to come to salvation. The only thing we really can control in these last days is that we can preach the kingdom. Because this is the one thing we actually can control. We can't control famines and earthquakes and, and wars and rumors. Wars. What we can do is is focus on what we're actually called to do, and that's to proclaim this kingdom. Now, one thing that, that Jesus talked about, and, and a parable you really have to know, is this parable in, in Luke 19. Now, he gives them the parable because they thought the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. And so he goes and it says, he, he tells this parable about a, a, a nobleman who went to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. And so he gives 10 servants and he gives them each a minya. He says, look, engage in business till I come. And so now the one that had a minya, he made 10 more. And the one that made 10 more, he gave them authority over 10 cities. Then another, uh, another one had a minya. He said, look, this minya, I've made five. And now he says, Lord, you, you made five minyas. And then the other one says, look, I, I buried, I kept, look, I was, I was really fearful and I was afraid. And notice this, that he took the minion from him that had one and gave it to the one that had ten. And, and this is a parable, and I, I want you to understand your end times theology. If it gets you in a bunker mentality, if it gets you, you know, trying to, to hide away and bury what God has given you, then, then this isn't a good sign. 
But what prophecy should be doing for us, it should be alerting us to the season we're in. It should be giving us a wake-up call. It should be giving us the the amount of information that we need because it actually takes more faith now not to believe than it does to believe. There, the, all the archaeological evidence is screaming out. All the prophecies that, that Jesus talked about is actually happening. And so now we have to ask ourselves, what's going on? Well, the eclipse that's going across America. Now, as, a, as we said before, the eclipses that happened before, there was an eclipse that happened during the Revolutionary War. There was an eclipse that happened during the Civil War. And there's an eclipse going across. And one of the first places it's going to go across is Eagle Pass, Texas. Now, Eagle Pass is connected to a lot of things happening right now. You had uh, the Supreme Court siding with the Biden administration to cut down the razor wire Eagle Pass, at which time Texas Governor Abbott goes ahead and so he basically doubles down and puts more wire. And at that time, Republican governors, along with the Border Patrol Union, stand with Abbott, and they're they standing up. They're showing up at the border. Where? At um, Eagle Pass. And now they're saying, hey, we're going to hold the line right here at Eagle Pass. We're not going to go ahead. At the same time, a lot of people sent me, hey, is this the, the end of Babylon? Now, there's actually quite a few papers out there talking about how there was a double eclipse at the collapse of Babylon. And a lot of people speculate that the U.S. is Babylon. I'm not of that persuasion, but it doesn't matter. What I do know is that this double eclipse was a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. It, it, this is the papers that have been talked about. But the one thing about Babylon, when Babylon collapsed, it was not destroyed. Remember, when Cyrus comes into Babylon, he, he blocks up, he dams up the Euphrates River and goes right underneath the waters, goes right into Babylon, takes over Babylon. He doesn't destroy it. Could it be that what we're seeing right now is the infiltration going right through the borders, going right through to actually see the collapse of the Biden administration, the, to see the collapse of this, of this thing? And you may ask, well, why would judgment come right now? Well, right now, Biden is really pushing, the Biden administration is pushing forward steps to unilaterally recognize a Palestinian state. Now, the, the Israeli government is overwhelmingly against this. They, they, they say, hey, look, peace has got to come, but it's got to come the right way. But now we have a situation where the nations are trying to determine Israel's borders. And in the Torah, in Deuteronomy, it says, look, I've set the boundaries of the nations according to the number of children of Israel, according to Israel's boundaries. Israel's boundaries are determining the nation's boundaries. And now we're having the nation's boundaries trying to determine Israel what its borders are. And prophetically speaking, it says in Joel that part of the reason why the judgment happens in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is because of how you deal with Israel. And then notice this, and they also divided my land. Notice that God says it's his land. And so now you have a situation that the division of land is going to take place in I look prophetically at Scripture, and I do not see the United States as a superpower in the last days. Could it be this is announcing the seizing of the collapse of the U.S. as we understand it? Now, I do not see it completely destroyed. What I do see it, though, is a, a, a pruning taking place. A pruning of this nation so that it can restore back to its beginning. And guess what I actually see? I actually see that this is going to be our finest hour, that, that we're going to see a revival like we've never seen in the United States. Now, most believers are not understanding what's actually happening. We actually had a poll reporting on Worthy News that 80% of U.S. Christians favor a two-state solution as a, as a solution to the Palestinian conflict. Look, the only peace that's going to come to the Middle East is through the Prince of Peace. And so we have to understand that that's how we're going to see true peace come. Now, right now, there's a lot of talk in anticipation of the red heifers. Now, the sacrifice could be happening as early in March. It could be going into uh, in, into into what we call Shavuot. Now, this is not the sacrifice. Um, you have to understand the sacrifice that's being made now is not a sacrifice like we understand. The sacrifice is being made now 
is for what they call for the purification rites, so that there can be a third temple. But we have to understand that this ceremony, the, the, the Temple Institute says they have nine pure priests. Now, the town that I live in, the town of Arad, there are three Hasidic yeshivas. And yeshiva is like a, a seminary. And the rumors in the town are that are actually kids who have never touched the ground in preparation for a temple. This is why for I moved to Arad in 2003. For almost 12 years, we had protests that happened regularly outside our house. Why? Because they looked at us as preventing the temple from coming. And so they looked at us as an abomination in the land. Now we have a situation where they are getting ready to have the ashes that are needed for the purification rites for another temple. And so now they believe it's going to happen between the area of, of Passover 2024 and Shavuot or Pentecost of 2024. So we're talking about in the next month or so, the Temple Institute has been trying to breed red heifers and and in their article talking about the tenth red heifer, they talk about the Mishnah that teaches up to the destruction of the, temp uh, of the second temple. There was ashes being prepared from a total of nine red heifers, and the red heifers were used. And each time it was it was it was produced was in the hands of great leaders. Well, now it talks about the tenth red heifer, and according to the Mishnah. According to the great Maimonides, it, it ends with this enigmatic statement. And the tenth red heifer will be accomplished by the king. The Messiah may be revealed speedily. Amen. May it be God's will. And according to the Temple of it says this. With this amazing statement, the Maimonides recant, recounts an ancient tradition that the tenth red heifer is associated with the Messianic era. Is this a warning of, uh, in these waning times, is this an indication, a forerunner of the appearance of the Messiah himself, who will officiate at its preparation? So now you have the situation, and there's a things being staged, set, the stage being set for a rebuilding of the temple. According to the Maimonides, according to the Law of Kings, it says this, that the Ramnon states that the Messiah, an earthly Jewish king, will build the third temple. And in fact, he states, this is the only com conclusive proof of the identity of the Messiah is that he will be the one to build the temple. Now, they've already found a location. And the location is right on the, on the, on the, on the, Mount, of, on the Mount of Olives that faces right where the Dome of the Rock is. They have a quarter acre of land. They're already prepared. And you have to understand that the things that are taking place are actually what Jesus warned about in Matthew 24. He says, When you therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the Holy Spirit, whosoever reads, let him understand. Yeshua, Jesus, literally says, this is the one prophecy you have to begin to understand. You have to study this out. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is that the temple that is coming is not the temple of Ezekiel. The temple of Ezekiel, the courtyard, the measurements of the courtyard are about as as small as 250 square miles. You see that it encompasses all of Jerusalem or as large as 80 miles by 30 miles. Now, I don't have time to get into it, but the reality is that this is not the temple of Ezekiel that they're trying to lay. This is actually a situation that is talked about, and this is not the New Jerusalem. A lot of people speculate the New Jerusalem is the Ezekiel Temple. Well, the Ezekiel Temple is rectangular, and this particular, uh, the New the New Jerusalem is actually, um, you know, a, a square shaped. It could be as much as 1,200. It could be as 1,600 square miles. You know, there's a lot of debate about that. It doesn't matter. I just want to show, point out that the temple there is much bigger. But right now, we are finding archaeological evidence and archaeological um, things that are telling us something. This, about two weeks ago, we found a, a coin in the desert. And it was called the Year One of the Redemption of Israel. It was during the Jewish Bar Kokhba revolt against the Roman Empire. Well, what was that revolt? It was at a time when Bar Kokhba was announced to be a false messiah. But at the beginning, he was announced as a good messiah. They thought he was the messiah leading a revolt against the Roman Empire at that time. But it turned out to be a false messiah. 
Could this coin be announcing something? Could it be announcing the beginning of the deception coming? I encourage you, watch the video I posted up a year ago. Red Heifer's The Coming Temple and the Great Delusion. Spend time watching it. I use a lot of scripture in that. Watch the video. I can't implore you enough to how much you need to watch the video. Now, right now, this year, archaeological discoveries are being discovered, and each time they're telling us something. For example, in September, we found four ancient Roman soul, a, a swords captured during the Bar Kokhva revolt. Now, what happens um, uh, two months later? It was the beginning of the Swords of Iron. The a attack that's happening inside of Gaza is called Operation Swords of Iron. Now, we are seeing a situation where we're seeing now the war expanding. And it looks like we're having a major war with Hezbollah. Hezbollah is directly financed by Iran. And at the same time, you have Iran announcing they have everything they need for nuclear weapons. They've crossed all the thresholds of nuclear science. And so now we're looking at a situation. But I want to go back. And I think that Purim has to be something we have to study and we have to understand and Purim coming up March 24th, that's coming up 10 days from now, is a very significant event. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but in recent history, Purim has been connected to wars. In the 1990-1991 Gulf War, it ended on February 28th. That happened to be the day of Purim. Twelve years later, two days after Purim, was the beginning of the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Then in 2011, we had a military intervention in Libya, killing Muammar Gaddafi on March 19, 2011. What happened that day? March 11, 2019 was Purim. What was happening in the U.S.? We actually had a supermoon over the Lincoln Memorial it was a blood red moon on March 19, 2011. So, look, wars and rumors of wars connected to eclipses and red moons and heifers. There's a lot of prophetic events happening. Now, last year we had, you know, um, the the Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, said we're gonna uh, we are, are gonna maybe attack the nuclear facilities. And the International Atomic Energy Agency said, hey, you can't attack the facilities. It's against the law. And then you know, says, which law we're breaking? And what is Purim? Purim is the celebration. The, the decree could not be revoked. Haman was trying to eradicate the Jewish people in the ancient kingdom of Persia, which is the modern state of Iran, but at that time, he sent another decree. And the decree was the Jews were allowed to defend themselves. And not only defend themselves, but now what happened because of this? It said many people joined themselves to the Jewish people because they saw that God was with them. Now look, there's an event happening. Now we're coming to a situation where the church is being found I really believe in the in the scales of judgment. We found an interesting coin or an interesting Byzantine era weight, and this happened in January 28, 29th of twenty twenty four, so just um, two months ago. And this weight talked about the pre Islamic Christian presence on the Temple Mount, and everyone's focused about the history of this. But as I saw, and as I was doing this article and I assigned this article, I was praying about what does this mean and. I really believe now that church is in the balances. We are now in the scales of judgment. And and how we go ahead and stand with the Jewish people and stand with Israel, I believe is a, a big component of that. But I also believe it's connected to something else. I believe it's connected to one of the greatest moves of God getting ready to take place. I believe that we're getting ready to, to see a, a move of God like we've never seen before. And so many people are focused on the wrong things about these last days. I want to focus on what God is doing. And what is God doing in you? We're going to have the greatest move of God take place. It's going to happen with or without you. He doesn't really need us to stand with the Jewish people. 
But just like in the days of Esther and Mordecai, Mordecai says to Esther, have you brought to the kingdom for such a time as this? I believe it is. I believe that we're going to see the greatest move of God take place, and, and we need to really focus on what God is doing. So listen, I encourage you, start following Worthy News. Start telling everyone about Worthy News. Follow us on Telegram. On Telegram is the only channel that is unfiltered. It, it is completely, um, you know, um, non-censored. I, I really stopped posting on Facebook. I, I, I not to say that I despise fake book, but quite frankly, um, I'm, I, I, I believe in telling the truth, and my truth shouldn't be determined on you know, being fearful of being, you know, removed from fake book. Please spread this word. God is getting ready to do something. It may do something through you. So Abba Father, I ask you, Lord, to seal this word. Help every hearer receive this word as it was intended to be delivered. And I ask you, Lord, that you would just equip them to reap in a harvest of harvest in these last days. Well, thank you for watching. I encourage you to, to follow our, our, our uh, YouTube channel. Go ahead and follow us on worthy.tv as well. Sign up for our Worthy Briefs. We send it out Monday through Friday. Until next time, this is George Witten recording. Um, with worthy news.